That's it. I need to replace Helm with something else. Why? You might be asking, what's wrong with Helm? If that's what you're asking, I'm not going to answer that question or those questions fully here. A part of the answer to that question can be found in this video. Over there, I explore issues I have with Helm templating. As a matter of fact, I complain not only about Helm, but also about customized syndicates and Carvel White Day. I'm not going to repeat myself. What I do want to explore, or to be more precise, complain about are the other more operational parts of Helm. Those that go beyond templating. Here's what I want to be able to do. To begin with, I want a language that is designed to manage data structures instead of free text templating employed by Helm. You know that because, again, you watched that video, right? Let's discuss other complaints. First of all, I want a mechanism that will allow me to apply resources in stages. If I have custom resource definitions, they must be applied first, followed with namespaces, after those go typical workloads, and finally, custom resources. Applying those in the wrong order often results in errors. For example, if I apply a custom resource before its definition, Kubernetes will complain. The same can be said about typical workloads. If a controller running in a pod is not applied before the custom resource, I'm likely going to face issues and controllers are just typical workloads. Now, Helm does some of that out of the box, and for the rest, we might need to resort to hooks, which are cumbersome to work with and often result in a whole other set of issues. Next, I need support for upgrading CRDs and their controllers. Now, you might be saying, I do not have CRDs and controllers. If that's the case, let me start by saying that you almost certainly do have them. Even if you don't write your own CRDs, you will likely use those written by others. If you install any of the Argo projects, or Flux, or Flagger, or almost any, any third-party app, you will get CRDs and controllers. So here comes the question, how will you upgrade those? Sure, not all releases have changes to CRDs, but some do. CRDs are an essential part of Kubernetes, and we need to be able to upgrade them. Helm does not support CRD upgrades. The docs explain the reasoning behind that, but that's not good enough for me. Upgrades of everything are a must. Speaking of CRDs, if you're writing your own, as you should, you cannot apply templates to them. All you can do with Helm is to use plain YAML for CRDs. And that's, that's silly. That defies the purpose of Helm. Next, um, when I execute Helm delete, I expect Helm to delete everything it creates. However, that's not the case. Helm will leave custom resource definitions and persistent volume claims in the cluster. Now, I do understand that such operations might be dangerous. I would not mind if there would be a flag that will allow me to say that I really, 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 really want to delete everything. But there's no such flag. What else? Um, oh yeah, Helm keeps YAML manifests in Kubernetes secrets. It uses them to track changes and show history. That's great, right? No, it's not, not great at all. The size of Kubernetes secrets is limited and keeping the manifests in secrets might generate problems if the size of those manifests is bigger than the secrets allow. Whatever I'm using, it should not keep manifests in secrets, period. To summarize, I want to be able to use a language designed to manage data structures, apply resources in stages, upgrade CRDs and their controllers, use templates with CRDs, optionally delete CRDs and PVCs, and not keep YAML manifests in secrets. Those are reasonable requests, aren't they? Helm is out, and I went on a quest to find a replacement, and I did. I found a relatively new project made by Stefan Prodan. Now, if you do not know that name, you should. Stefan is the creator of Flagger, Flux, the version two, the, the good one, and a few other projects. He's a brilliant engineer, and I'm a big fan of his work. Hence, when I saw that he created a project that happened to address all my complaints about Helm, I had to try it out. The project is called Timoni, and 
let me tell you right away. It's awesome. So, let's check it out. Let's see how it works. Timoni is based on Q. Yeah! And it packages Q modules as Open Container Initiative or OCI images. That's just what we need. Q is probably the best language we can use today to manage configurations, state, data structures, and similar things. Container images, on the other hand, are a golden standard for packaging and distributing stuff. Those two together sound like a perfect choice. Now, I will not go into demonstrations of each of my requirements. You need to trust me when I say that they are all met. Instead, we'll take a quick tour of how the money works. To begin with, we can apply any set of manifests packaged as a container image using the money. For example, if I would like to run my silly demo application, all I have to do is instruct the money to apply silly demo package module packaged as a container image stored in a image registry. By the way, I'm using C810IO as the registry. It is Harbor, which I already explored in that video. Except that this time I'm using a hosted version of Harbor and I strongly suggest checking it out by visiting container-registry.com. There's the link below here. Now let me go back to Timoni and that's it. The effect is similar to what I would get if I would use Helm upgrade dash dash install command. You'll see throughout the rest of the demo that the rest of the commands or to be more precise, the functionality of Timoni is similar to Helm. We will talk about that later as well. Now, the output tells us what was done. Since this is the first time I applied manifests of this application to this cluster, the result is creation of a few resources. Now, I'm paranoid by nature, so let me double check that everything is as expected and running. I will do that by executing kubectl namespace get all and ingresses. You can see, it's all there. It created the namespace demo, it created a service, an ingress, a deployment, which in turn created replica set, which created two pods. Just as with Helm, we can customize the result through values files. Uh, over there, I'm defining a specific tag I want to use, ingress host and auto scaling with the minimum number of replicas set to three. Now, unlike Helm, we are not limited to YAML. That is the power of Q. It can serialize and deserialize data structures to and from a variety of formats. So I could also have values in the Q format or I could have them as JSON. Now, even though I prefer writing manifests in Q, I prefer using YAML for values. That happens to be easier for others to understand and modify. So let me update the application using values specified in that YAML file. Actually, let me first do a dry run to see what would happen if I apply the changes. We can see that the number of replicas specified in the deployment would change to one since there is no point in having any other value when autoscaling is enabled. Horizontal pod autoscaler will be created and the ingress host will change. Great. Now, let me apply those changes with the same command but without dry run and diff arguments. Let me output everything and double check that everything is as expected. And there we go. Ingress host changed, HPA is now there and it changed the number of replicas to three since that's what I set as the minimum. Finally, I can delete the application with Timoni, namespaces demo, delete silly demo and wait, right? Now, even though this demo does not contain CRDs and PVCs, you need to trust me when I say that they would be deleted as well unlike with Helm. Okay, so let's switch from operational side of the project into definitions. How does it look like to define a module which in a way is equivalent to a Helm chart? Timoni is based on Q, so it should not be a surprise that everything we define is in Q. If you know Q, as you should, Timoni will be a breeze. All you have to learn is a few conventions. Timoni Q file is the entry point. That's where we define the values, metadata, like the name and the namespace, and most importantly, the objects that will be applied. In this context, objects are Kubernetes resources. Most of the time, you will not need to touch this file. It's created together with a few others when we execute Timoni mod init command. Further on, we have config Q file that defines two things. 
there's the schema with types, uh, default values, and policies and constraints. Further down is the instance with objects. Those objects are the actual resource definitions, or to be more precise, references to the definitions. And the rest of the files in the templates directory are actual definitions. Here's, for example, the deployment definition. Now, it might sound intimidating at first, but it's actually quite simple. And finally, we have values like those we saw earlier that can be defined as Q or YAML or JSON formats. And I will not go deeper into it simply because it's not about the money. There's not much to learn about it. And that's the beauty of it. What you need to learn is Q. Oh, there is one more thing I almost forgot. We can import schemas from Git repositories or from files. This is not specific to Timoni, but something baked into Q. If I would like to work with, let's say, cross-plane extensions, all I would have to execute is go get and then the address to the Git repository that contains the definitions of those extensions. And since almost everything in Kubernetes is defined as Go and Q is based on Go, it just works. And the second command I would need to execute is Q get Go that will transform Go libraries into a Q import. From there on, I would be able to define cross my resources based on that schema and defaults and the rules and so on and so forth. There would be no guessing involved. We're almost done. We figured out how to do operations based on OCI images created with Timoni. We saw how to define the modules. And the only thing left is to see how to build and publish those OCI images. We can either build or push Timoni modules. If we would not like to package modules as OCI images, we can simply execute the money build command. What we got in the output are the YAML manifest that we could pipe into kubectl apply or we could store directly in Git. We could also build YAML with specific values. We can see that this time horizontal pod autoscaler is there as well since the values file enabled autoscaling. Or we can go full Monty and build an OCI image and push it to a registry. And that's it. We're done with the demo. Now, let's talk about Timoni a little bit more. Timoni is a great project. This is the first time I feel that we have a viable alternative to Helm. Now, that might sound confusing since it might contradict some of the statements I made earlier. So let me clarify what I mean by that. I still believe that Customize is the best option for first party apps as long as they're simple to define. I still believe that we should be moving complexity to the cluster by creating CRDs and controllers. I still believe that solutions like Crossplane Cube, Cubevela and others are what we should be using for first party apps. If we do that, if we do create CRDs that define our apps and our infrastructure and whatever else we might be managing through Kubernetes, manifests will be simple and short. In those cases, we will not need Helm or Carvel YTT or CDKs or JSONnet or Timoni. However, that applies only to our own apps and only if the complexity is moved to the cluster. Sometimes that is not good or viable option. And in those cases, we do need more than customize or if we stick with it, it might become a burden to manage. Those are the cases when Helm and other less known tools and solutions come into play. Those are the cases when Helm might sound like a good option, but it's not. If you're not sure why Helm is not a good option, please rewatch the beginning of this video where I explained why. Now, I do believe that Carvel YTT or CDKs are better options than Helm, but they're not great either. That's why I searched for an alternative to all those, and I think that the search ended. Q is now my favorite language, or a format, and Timoni is now my favorite tool for managing my own apps when they're complex enough to justify it. Q gives me the flexibility and is not driving me crazy as Helm templates are. Timoni gives me structure I need and all the features I was using with Helm. Q and Timoni are a great match. Nevertheless, everything I said so far applies only to first party apps, you know, those defined by us, by you. There is still the subject of third-party apps. Those are the apps that we did not write, but that we still need to install and manage. 
Those are the applications written by other people, be it open source or commercial. Now, the vast majority of those are defined as Helm charts. It does not matter what we need, be it Prometheus or PostgreSQL or Argo CD or even Flagger, which was also written by Stefan, by the way, the author of Timoni. Almost every third-party app that can run in Kubernetes has a Helm chart. And all we have to do to use it is to execute Helm upgrade dash dash install, and that's it. If you are lucky, some of them might be defined in different formats, but those cases are an exception rather than a rule. That means that we are stuck with Helm charts for third-party apps, at least in the foreseeable future. That's not because Helm charts are a great format, but rather because Helm has the first mover advantage. It's the de facto standard and projects and vendors that distribute their applications to a wide number of users and companies must support it. Still, there are two things important to note here. First of all, the fact that you likely cannot escape Helm when third-party apps are concerned does not mean that you should define your own applications as Helm charts. You can, but you don't have to. And I strongly recommend that you adopt or at least consider adopting Q and Timoni. Q is likely going to become a standard for defining configuration states, and it might easily go beyond that and become your go-to tool for other purposes, like, for example, CI pipelines. Second, sooner or later, we will change. Change is inevitable and no technology lasts forever, except mainframes, maybe. From my part, I will do my best to promote Q and Timoni not only as currently the best solution for first-party apps, but also as a potential replacement for Helm charts as the de facto standard for third-party apps. Whether it will happen is yet to be seen. It probably won't, but hey, I'm an optimist. What I'm trying to say is that I would love to see Timoni replacing Helm for third-party apps, but that is probably not going to happen. For good or bad, you will be using Helm for third-party apps, and the question is only whether you should switch to Timoni for your own applications. I say yes, do it. I'm doing it. I'm rewriting all my manifests that require that level of complexity to Q and Timoni. And even if Timoni ends up being a failure, it is still all Q, and I should have no trouble transitioning it to something else or even manage them with Q alone. Remember, I'm not suggesting Timoni, but rather I'm suggesting that you use Q, and if you do, Timoni is today the best tool to do Kubernetes-related operations with Q. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Cheers.